for the voters in Jacksonville who might be torn at this point, not knowing who to vote for, why should they vote for you? I, you know, the experience levels are pretty high. So I started in corrections in 1991, did 31 years, um, all 31 years with Jacksonville, um, and loved every second of it. And um, just ha I started at the very bottom as a corrections officer and moved my way up to finally a division chief within the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And so experience is your, your running card that you think is going to be the biggest issue here, mm -hmm. at least, or the biggest reason people should vote for you. When That's it correct. comes to issues, though, what do you think is the biggest issue that needs to change or that you want to make change? So we've had issues since I've, since I've been a, a police officer that we've all been working behind, working with less people. Instead of having enough or more than enough, we've always had too little. Um, I think we need to change that and I will work to change that because it's necessary for us to provide the proper service to our community would be making sure we are fully staffed and a, you know IACP did a study for us and they said we had we needed 2.5 officers per thousand we have 1.98 so we have to increase in order to do that um, I'm going to have to ask the city council. We're going to have to work hard to get that done. Do you think that's going to be difficult considering the budget's already about to be $550 million? So the, I'm, I'm glad you bring up the budget. Budget's a good, a good subject. You know, a, a large portion of our budget, over 80% of our budget's non-discretionary. That's salary and benefits. In order to keep our employees, to keep our, our agency competitive with other agencies across the state, we have to pay our employees. So most of that is salary and benefits. Um, it may be difficult, but it's a, necess it's a necessity for us to, for us to do, um, for we can so we can find ourselves in the in the right direction, continuing to move forward as the city grows, our agency needs to grow. We can't stay stagnant. And when you talk about adding people, are those actually going to be physical boots on the ground, guys in patrol cars and officers on the street, or is it more of a managerial, higher level staff? No, it's not managerial at all. It's all p patrol officers. Um, Again, our city is, is very large, 842 square miles. We've been operating doing, with the principle of doing more with less for a very long time. And it's, and it's time for us to, to do more with the, the number of people, the proper number of people that we need to cover and uh, take care of our citizens. You know, I've been covering JSO a while, grew up here. You've talked about some of the issues that you've experienced since you've been with the department. Where do you fall in that? I mean, would you say you're a part of the problem or have, would you be part of the solution? And how does that actually play out moving forward? Were you to be sheriff? When you say part of the problem, what, what problem? What do you mean? Well, you I mean, there have been issues that there's at this point, and we'll get to it, but discrepancy over the solve rate. Um, violent crime is going back up this year. Um, and the, the, it's a, a banner year for arrests of officers or corrections officers. That's just this year. Um, you know, how do you see fixing that moving forward? Well, we, we've been fixing it. So we work very hard to, to hire the best and the brightest. And we have the best and the brightest working for us. But when we, when we find problems, um, when the agency finds problems, they address those issues. And that's why there's been, an, uh, a, if there's been a slight uptick, that's why, because we address those issues. Um, as being a part of this, the previous staff, uh, I was a part of the solution. I will continue to be a part of the solution. I've built, when it comes to uh, addressing violent crime, I've built something within our city, within our agency, that focuses solely on violent crime and focuses on individuals that commit violent crime. Um, getting down with Melissa Nelson and, 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 and working out things that we can do to, to do better and to increase our our visibility, one, and how we address violent crime, two, more proactive, but not just traffic stops. Traffic stops is something that takes place in, with our patrol officers, yes, but um, focused deterrence is what we like to call it. And we will continue to do that because I was a large part of building all of that and within the sheriff's office. And earlier when you were answering the question, you said that in the time you've been with JSO, that there have been some issues. Sure. What are those issues that you've seen in your experience? Um, let me see. There's been issues with uh, officers doing things they have no business doing. Um, there's been issues with information being get, getting out so that we can provide better information to our community, uh, um, not being able to get it out as quickly as, as we'd like to. We've worked through those issues now, and we're going to continue to work through those issues because that's important for us. As far as being uh, plagued with problems, it's not the case. I've dedicated 31 years of my life to this place. I love this city, and I love that agency. I've been all over this country. I've seen agencies all over this country. Jacksonville, bar none, is one of the very best. And we'll continue to, to make improvements to, sh to show that we're going to do what's necessary to do better. 
but Jacksonville is one of the very best. One of the problems that so far mm -hmm. all of the other candidates have brought up is transparency. Do you mm -hmm. feel like there's a transparency problem with JSL? No, I think there's uh, improvements that need to, be need to be made. So I've been a part of sitting, sitting in the room with Sheriff Williams and, and, Sher and uh, Melissa Nelson working on getting, like for example, our officer involved shooting videos. You know, there's evidentiary processes that take place that, that are in, that we have to make sure we don't violate those rules before we let those things out. So we, we worked really hard on making sure that those videos get out quicker, making sure that we, so I want to build a bigger PIO unit. I want to build a unit that's more robust. I want to give every agency, every outlet, their own liaison officer so that you'll have someone you can go directly to to help you get what you need, not just one, two, or three but a, a robust agency, a unit, to make sure that we can do that quicker and more effectively. Um, so I anchor Sunday nights, and I feel like a lot of times I'm sitting at, on the set, and it's another violent weekend in mm -hmm. Jacksonville, another deadly weekend in Jacksonville. We've done those stories a lot. What specifically will you do to curb violent crime in our city? Depend a lot, a lot on our public. Um, how do we do that? We build our trust back up. Um, and continue to do the things that we've been doing and improving upon those things. When I say we created an entire section focused on violent crime, I largely believe in 2020 we had 180 homicides, and that's covering everything. That's justified, that's excusable, that's also involvement. We had 180. In, 100, in 2021, we had 130. We are slightly above that, but we're not going back to 180. And we're gonna to continue to work the things that we've been working to make sure that that happens. Stuff like going to doors and knocking on doors of young men that we know are involved in violent crime and telling them we need them to stop and having a community partnership, not just talking about building partnerships, really doing it. I went out over, over the years and built an army of people that went out with us every Thursday and knocked on doors and talked to young men and said, we want you to stop and do something different and had an option for them to do something different. We'll continue to do that. I think we can build that up and make it even stronger. You bring up trust. That's something that every candidate has also brought up. How did we get to a problem where there's not the trust in the police department that should be there? I think we're having a, a, a communication issue. So we have a large social media, we have social media, we have the news media, we have a lot of different things that are pushing stories out there, but there's no, not a lot of balance. What I've noticed, the balance would be telling about positive, good stories that take place within Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, what we are doing for community members all across this city, because a large portion of our community li likes us, and they really care about what we've done as a community and as a city. And, we'll, and I think by building our, making our patrol beats, for example, our areas of responsibility for patrol, making them smaller so that we can get close to our community once again and have conversation. It's something as simple as being able to communicate with one another and recognizing that, you know, a policeman is a human being. He's just tasked to do a job that every member of the community should be doing. Sir Robert Peel said that many years ago, but they just do it. They just do it part time. But we are members of this community and we care about this community and we have to do a better job of getting people to understand that we want to earn their trust and their, and their respect. We have to earn it. Do you feel like you guys are accessible? Yeah, I think we are. I think. Um, it depends if you want to talk to us or not. I mean, if you really want, if you want to have a conversation, we're, we're doing the best that we can to, to increase our access, but all this stuff needs improvement. All this stuff, so being on the outside looking in now, recognizing that we're gonna improve on those things and do better, do a better job. Um, one thing that's made headlines and there's been some discrepancy back and forth is about the homicide solve rate. Mm -hmm. Where do you think Jacksonville stands on this? We stand, I worked there for 10 years. I work, and we, we've had a, the most amazing detectives, I think, in the country. That's what? probably because I'm, I work there. I understand how it works. I understand that there are carryover cases. I understand how the entire process works. But last year, we had a 78% clearance rate. And I know that story's been corrected. I don't know if you guys have corrected, but it's been corrected. So, you, so last year's clearance rate was 78%? That's correct. Okay, what, and, okay, that's, we can talk about that. It's just interesting because the transparency page doesn't show that. It's, JSO's own transparency page doesn't show that. Right, that story has been corrected and those guys are correcting that as we go. I, I, and I know another outlet has made that correction, but um, the clearance rate was 78% last year. And there, there's been years where it's been down, there's been years where it's been up, but let me tell you why that happens. When you work these cases, it's very important that we establish relationships where we can get information. 
if our community does not like or doesn't feel like we can we can solve these cases and we don't get information, we'll never get anywhere. We can't do anything without the cooperation of our community. The sheriff's office doesn't operate without the cooperation from our community. Um, some cases are much tougher than others. Um, so that's why you'll find ebbs and flows sometimes in the clearance rate. But we've had clearance rates as high as 80% and as low as 40. But the, last year's clearance rate was, 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 was really high. I mean, it's the national average is 51%. That's correct. How, how is Jacksonville so much higher? Well, because we are very good at what we do. We have a great state attorney's office that helps us along the way. We start, we start those cases early on. They come out with us. We, we evaluate things that we do, and we don't arrest people before we know, for, we, we know that they're responsible for the crime. And being, before we do that, depending on the amount of the evidence that we have and depending on um, the number of people that we can talk to and gain information from, helps depend, it, it, that really, really helps our case. Example, if you have a case that has a lot of physical evidence, the chances of those cases getting solved are a lot better. The cases where there's just eyewitness evidence, sometimes it's difficult. But our state attorney and our detectives, they work together from, from the very start of each one of those cases. It just when, when you left, do you know what, how many cases that each detective had a year? Um, I, I, would, I would have to refresh. Okay. It's, and you're an interesting spot because you're the most recent employee of JSO out mm -hmm. of all of the candidates. So you're directly referring to the work that you did with your former boss. Mm -hmm. But do you think the answer moving forward is more of the same and keep doing what you're doing? Or do you think it's something different, a change of course? When you say a change of course, I need some specifics of what you're saying. Well, I can tell you, I mean, some of the other candidates have talked about a reorg. They've talked about a financial audit of, of how things are going. They've talked about creating a citizens advisory panel. Right. Their answer is very much, we need to do something different. And none of that helps the clearance rate. If that's the question we're talking about. I'm not talking about the clearance rate. I'm talking about as a candidate oh, for so sheriff. Okay, I got you. As someone in the leadership, the top cop in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. do you think it is to continue doing the work that under the administration for whom you worked and doing a lot of the same things, keeping those programs going? Or do you think that to, to attain the things you're talking about that you want to achieve, you've got to do something different? Well, I've, I've explained some different things that we're going to do. Um, one is de decrease the size of our areas of responsibility for our patrol officers. Add more patrol officers to our streets, because we need those. They've been operating for a very long time, um, short, and we need to change that. So there's a lot of things that need to change. Do you think organizational structure is one of those? It's possible. When, I get in that, when you get in that seat, it seems very easy for me to sit here and, and throw out a whole bunch of things without giving you any context. Um, it's very easy to say that, but what I do know is that's all stuff that we have to study and we have to look at. The beat systems and how we decrease our patrol areas, I know we can do that because I've already studied those things. The things that I'm telling you, I've already done. I think you can ask people all around this community the things that, that, that I've done and my passion for this community and this agency, and they would, and they would be, a wit be a witness to it. I guess maybe the better question or the better <clears throat> way to phrase it is, are you the establishment candidate? And if that's the case, what does that mean for you? Well, what does that mean? Establishment cat, what does that mean? Well, are you the heir apparent for JSO, the chosen guy that, you know, they've, they've put out for press conferences before you declared? Are you the person who they want in this office? And, and what does that look like? I'm the person that was endorsed by the sheriff, if that's what you're asking. Um, but in my own man, in my own, my own man that makes my own decisions, of course I am. Um, I don't have a problem making decisions. Uh, I don't have a problem separating from something that I don't, that I don't agree with. That's very easy to do. Um, never had that issue in my life, and I think that's what makes my leadership ability, um, makes people like my leadership ability, being able to stand up, being able to say when well, something's wrong or something's not right. Um, so no, I, as far as the establishment candidate goes, I, I, the people have to, to want me as a sheriff. It doesn't matter what the sheriff wants. The people have to want that. And I want them to realize, you know, my strengths. And, 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 and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everything's wrong in the sheriff's office. I'm not going to tell you everything's right. I'm telling you there's improvement that needs to be made, and we're going to make the improvements where they need to be made. Is there anything I'm missing that, that you really want to make sure we hit on? No, I just I think what's really important is for people to understand and uh, for you to understand maybe that there is a lot that takes place within that agency. Um, there's a lot that, that I've been able to do uh, when I was there in that seat. You mentioned, you know, putting me out in front of 
um, for interviews before. I, yeah, that was part of my job as a, as a division chief of investigations. That's why I did those jobs. That was a part of it. Um, so there's a lot of different things that are taking place. But when it comes to my love for this city and my desire to, to see it go in the right direction and not go back to Jim McMillan and say he was a bad man or, or Nathaniel Glover say he was a bad man or John Rutherford and say they did something horrible or Mike Williams said it. No, my thing is to look at each one of those men. If there's something that needs to change, we'll change it. But then what we'll do is we'll build on those things and do the next things. You know, uh, Sheriff Williams used to say quite often, prevention, intervention, and enforcement. That was something he really, really believed in. I believe in that. I don't think anyone disagrees with that. But um, <clears throat> along the way, we have to look at some different ways of how we, all how we all address those things specifically and some of those things I've been able to tell you today. Jacksonville's, it's really on a precipice moving forward as people move here in droves, mm -hmm. but they move to St. John's County more so than Duval County and schools are a part of it, but so is crime. As the sheriff potentially of the future ushering in all of these new people, I mean, how do you prepare yourself and plan for added growth and making Jacksonville a destination that people really want to come to based on community and safety and all of those things you've been talking about? You have to keep it safe. I mean, no one wants to come to a place that's not thriving and it's not safe. So you have to keep it safe. We have some plans to make it safe. Listen, I have a leadership team that is bar none the best out of any, any candidate here. And the fact that they're willing to support me in this race, um, I think people all over this community know the people that I'm talking about. It's amazing. So um, we're ready to take, to take, take a hold of the reins and, and do what's necessary to, to see Jacksonville continue to thrive.